Hi everyone, let's take a look at the chapter three problem solve. It's a doozy. The trick is they're throwing us right into the fire. So there are gonna be steps where you're gonna have to go back to the chapter, remind yourself about how and why something works and then apply it here. And a good example is on step number two. Step number two says, you've been asked to determine how long the renovation of each room will take in days. Use the date diff function. All right, so I'm going to go over here to my worksheet and we're going to type this one in together. So it's the length of days and renovations. And the whole premise is that we have these different rooms at our golf course, resort, and spa. We're going to renovate them. And so we're figuring out all things related to the renovation. And the first one we want to figure out is, well, how long is the renovation going to take? So it tells us what function to use. So I'm going to type equals date diff. And we'll remember from the chapter, this one doesn't show up. You have to type it in. All right, add your opening parentheses because the system won't do it for you. And then here, if we look, we have the date that the renovation started and the date that it was completed. So, okay, I'm going to click on B6. That's my first date, comma, C6. That's my second date, comma, and then you'll remember from the book that we have to tell Excel how do we want the different how do we want the result displayed in the chapter we did y for years here the instructions tell us we want days so in the quotation marks put d for days all right add your closing parentheses and hit enter and it should be 93 and then you can fill it down the column make sure it works for all of them all right, going back over. Another tricky one is I'm going to let you do, um, oh, sorry, it moves too fast for me. I'm going to let you do, num well, let's do number three together. So when you look, it says use the name box to select the name increase in revenue. Now, I've already done this step, but here we go. Here's our name box. You're going to select increase in revenue. And if you haven't done this step, what it'll show is it'll show cell B15. And that's wrong. Cell B15 is empty. So to fix it, go to the Formulas tab, click Name Manager, find increase in revenue, click Edit, and change it to say B14. You can see I already fixed it. Yours has to say B14. Click OK. Click close. All right, moving on. Um, step four, which is kind of hidden behind me here, says after the renovation of each room will have more capacity. In cell I6, use the name that you just created to enter a formula to determine the projected increase in capacity. Okay, now this one's tricky because you have to do a little math. So let's go over to I6. Six, and you can see it on my screen here. I'm going to show it to you. So what I did is I said equals H6. Oh yeah, so not increase in capacity, but increase in revenue. We're going to take H6, which is the quarterly revenue, and then times that by the increase of 40% plus one. And notice that I have that in parentheses. Okay, so we're going to type this whole thing together. All right, are you ready? Here we go. I'm on cell I6. Equals H6. Add a left-hand parentheses. One, the number one, plus, and then it tells you you have to use the name. If you click on B14, it'll add the name. Increase in revenue. Add your closing parentheses, press enter. Oop, what did I do wrong? Oh, I forgot the multiple. <laughs> Let's do that again. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to delete it and start again. All right, back up in uh, I6, beyond cell I6. Equals, click H6. Do the asterisk multiplied by, <laughs> then your left-hand parentheses, 1 plus B14, which is increase in revenue. It has to use the name or you'll get it marked wrong. Close your parentheses and press enter. There we go. And then fill it down the column and double check your answers. They should look like mine. All right, let's keep moving on. That was step four. Step five, in cell B20, enter a function that'll calculate the monthly payment. I'm going to let you do this one on your own, the monthly payment. It's a PMT function, just like we learned in the chapter. 
So um, you can go back to chapter three, remind yourself how to do a PMT function. You need the rate. Remember that you have to divide the rate by 12 because it's monthly payments. You need the terms and you have to times that by 12 because the terms are in years and you're making monthly payments. And then you have to use the amount of the loan there in the PMT. So I'm going to let you do that step. All right, um, where are we then? Step six, I'm going to let you do step six. You're going to create the name for that range of cells. Step seven, in cell J6, use a lookup function. Okay, we can do this. Click on cell J6. We're going to use a lookup function. So here we go. Are you ready? Cell J6. We're going to type equals V lookup. That's the lookup function we're going to use. V lookup. I'm going to accept it there. The first thing we do need to do is to look up the value. And what we're going to do is we're going to look up the we are going to look up the value of the room here uh quarterly revenue now i have to remind myself it's quarterly or projected let me go back to the instructions real quick based on the projected revenue so we are going to look up the value here in i6 at a comma we are going to compare it to the table down below so i'm going to select with my mouse a23 through B26, and notice that it pops in the name for me. You Again, you have to use the name. The instructions tell you you have to use the name. Okay, add a comma. What column from this table down below, what column do we want it to return to us? We want it to return the reference, the information that's in column two. We want to know, is the room bronze or is it silver or is it gold? And we give that name depending on how much revenue it brings in. So we're going to say, type the number two because we want it to return what's in the second column. If the room revenue is worth 250,000 it's silver if it's 500,000 or more it's gold if it's seven then it's platinum all right add your ending parentheses and press enter this particular room is silver fill it on down the way and then make sure your answers match my answers on the screen right so this is kind of handy so what we're doing is we're saying based on the projected revenue of each room we're going to call them bronze or silver or gold to help us understand them all right, let's keep moving along. Step eight says on the room analysis worksheet, click cell G7 to determine the, um, the charges for the Musica room by using the sum if function. All right, so I'm going to go over to room analysis. I'm going to click on G7 and we're going to use the sum if function. Are you ready? On cell G7, we're going to type equals sum if select that name so that you get your opening parentheses now the range that we're so we want to find um the amount of money from total charges for the musica room so the first thing we need to do is we need to identify where we're going to look for this information so you're going to select a6 through a36 a6 through a36 add a comma the criteria actually sits in F7. So go ahead and click on F7, the Musica room. Add another comma. Now, what are we going to sum up? We're going to sum up total charges. So it's C6 through C36. Add your closing parentheses and then hang on a minute. Look up in your formula bar. Two of these uh, ranges need to be absolute references. The first one is A6 through A36. So in my formula bar with my mouse, I'm going to select where it says A6 through A36. I need this to be an absolute reference. So on my laptop, I'm going to press and hold the FN key, and then I'm going to press F4. Do you see how it puts in the dollar signs? Now, if that doesn't work for you, you can type in the dollar signs. It's okay. But otherwise, if it worked, then select in your formula bar, click with your mouse and highlight where it says F or sorry, C6 through C36. On your keyboard, press and hold Fn, press F4, absolute reference. 
Once you have those to be absolute references, you can fill it on down the way. And if your answers match mine, you've done it right, and you can move on. The next one, the next step, sorry, um, here says in cell G16 to determine the total count by using the count if function. And so you can see I have that same idea, except for now I'm using the count if function. And I'm saying count the number of occurrences in A6 through A36 when the criteria matches F16. All right, and then press enter. Um, notice, by the way, A6 through A36 is absolute, is an absolute reference again. And once you have that correct, you can fill it on down the way. The last step, I believe, is to add the file name code to the footer of both sheets. Then double check all of, I've gone very quickly to make this video short. Double check all of the instructions, read them thoroughly. Double check your work and then submit. Okay, good luck to you.